Hello everyone, just Goran here and welcome back to another real life zoo tour. We are back in Plankenau and today we're going to look at Africa. Last time we were in Australia, we're turning away past this beautiful totem pole. And of course, I'm still joined by Eben. Hello! Let's go into the section with the most elaborate... Oh, you're not going through the no. entrance. No, I am. I am. Oh, yeah, oh, this is a section with the most elaborate signs, well, <laughs> signs of all. It's, I it's, love it. I like it too, but it's like... <laughs> the Australian one has a giant boomerang. I mean, come on. <laughs> and this one has a couple of twigs. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> so, <sighs> kind of similar to the uh, Asia area, this... this area kind of has a slow start i would say like yeah. just a lot of theming lots of buildings um and yeah we're starting off over here kind of like a african farm sort of area with the uh somali black-headed sheep and the uh, with two seed cattle i just realized i haven't opened my <laughs> document of notes <laughs> that's fine it's <laughs> fine mean? i'll i'll talk but in between this boat is new is relatively new oh really yeah, yeah, this this boat hasn't been there that much. Like, the last time that I went to Plankenal, it was there. And I distinctly remember going out like, oh, this wasn't here before. Um, because I remember, I distinctly remember there being a bunch of exhibits here that were kind of old. So It's also pretty cool, like, completely covered up the power box or whatever's in there. Oh, yeah. That's, that's one of the things that Plankenal does kind of consistently and I like that mm -hmm. yeah sometimes so sometimes. this is the first <laughs> part of our experience here we are going to go on the bonobo trail basically um, so yeah just entire area dedicated to the bonobos and the ideas that we're going towards this research camp sort of area where they're studying the bonobos there and are a few new things in here or maybe it's because I didn't take the correct route which is in <laughs> which to be fair in Plunkadal is really easy to do <laughs> I have not had issues with that <laughs> it's pretty clear where you're supposed yeah, to go but if, you, if you come from Europe you can end up in Africa without going through this area so it, pff, it's the zoo's fault it's not my fault <laughs> if you take the shortcut which has a giant sign that says you are now leaving Europe Entering Africa, and then yes, you can end up in the Africa area. Exactly. What are you talking about? <laughs> and you miss all of this cool stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, here we have the bonobo habitat, which oh, I'm it. pretty, I'm a pretty big fan of. They got a yeah. huge climbing frame, and just a lot of greenery, which is awesome to see. Yeah, and and, and I know that like in our community, people have been talking like, oh, we're no longer doing islands for uh, monkeys, but like. If the islands are big enough and have enough space and things to discover, it's still fine and it still works. Yeah, if you have space for it. Like, the thing is, like, yes, a moat takes up space, but if you have the space to yeah. still give them a big habitat, then it's just, for me, it's the best viewing experience for these types of animals. Oh, yeah, for sure. What we have over here as well, um, first, we were on top of this building, uh, and now we're at the bottom. Uh, kind of the same viewing point, but sold twice, which I think is a pretty common... Mm -hmm. technique used yep. um, which is pretty cool to see in action here I like and it. just a little viewing area and then we'll continue in the route you see with a clear sign that says what the route is <laughs> 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 rules are there to be broken <laughs> oh, okay of course of course well speaking <sighs> of that let's take a quick <laughs> there we go <laughs> Uh, of course love, you did. Look at that, look <laughs> at that tree. Ah, oh, so cool. Oh, wow. I love this. These walkways, though, like they are just on these little poles and stuff. It <laughs> looks yeah. very um, handcrafted and just really cool. And still compliant for people who use wheelchairs, which I yep. truly uh, approve. Because I know that there are like parts in Antwerp that are really hard for wheelchair users, so I'm really yeah. happy that. Blancandal does a better job at that. I know that Rotterdam Zoo recently, uh, like there was an old, very old bridge that just had staircases and they at least turned one side of it into a ramp mm -hmm. so yeah. that people can get onto it, which is really nice. But yeah, 
it started to rain, so <laughs> get, thank God that we were about to enter the indoor area. <laughs> uh, and it was actually really cool uh, yeah. throughout the day, um, cause, because it just so started to rain as I was going inside, all of the monomas also went inside. Um, though, um, for the inside part, I'm mostly using footage from my earlier visit, because it was a little more interesting. But yeah, we are... I... Yeah. <laughs> I really like this this area we're, we're going in right now. Yeah. This this is, yep. This this is both very classic kind of zoo theming, mm -hmm. uh, not not like in the classic set in like in Planet Zoo, but like the typical <laughs> thing you see. Um, yeah. But it's done in such a good way that like the immersion here, mm -hmm. it's just oh, it's so cool. Um, and just the theme of it, like we are going into the research camp so the entire area you can see has got like kind of tents it's like you're inside of a tent there's all of the materials and equipment for the researchers that are camping out here uh, the, the research equipment like microscopes and all sorts of stuff just so much attention to detail uh, of course we have a whole family tree which Plunkanel does for a number of their animals which is really mm -hmm. cool to see um, yeah just so much cool stuff in here I absolutely adore this kind of stuff because it, it I I like it a lot when information is given to um, guests like in a way like oh we've noticed that the bonobos were doing this and that oh we figured out this like and and it feels like you're you're reading things that the researchers have noticed and it's yeah. so it works so well yeah and it's like especially in here it's all delivered in this kind of context mm -hmm. that just it suits a story and it makes you feel immersed, which exactly. is just so cool. Yeah, all of these props and stuff like that. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like explaining that. <laughs> I always forget that one. <laughs> but yeah, what's on the menu? Yeah, just kind of like all of your basic. Yeah, like, it's it's all of the classics, but done in a very cool fashion that you're like okay this is nice <laughs> yeah and just like it's the complete like package you know like some zoos uh, mm -hmm. just show like oh yeah we want to tell this part but here at Blancanel they just throw everything at you and I think that also gives something to look at if you're a returning visitor because you're not going to read it all oh yeah once. There's, there's so much I don't think that I've read all of it yet it's just yeah. And just the verticality of this stuff as well. There's just one tiny thing that keeps taking me out of it. <laughs> the murals. It, yeah, the murals. They are they are nice, they, but they are a little bit too like cartoony to really <laughs> work well. <laughs> they would work wonders in Planet Zoo. <laughs> oh yeah, well, that's for sure. Yeah, so more props. We even have a gun. <laughs> I don't know why that one stood out to me. <laughs> I think last time I I actually didn't notice that either either the tent um, the cloth wasn't there yet or I simply didn't notice. Um, but yeah. wow, that tent effect is really good. It's so cool. It's it definitely feels like you're in and here like the clothing line and just uh, it, it definitely feels like you're in that research camp. Um, even this even the fire extinguishers kind of themed <laughs> like. <laughs> so I love cool. it. Yeah, the bonobos have so much space because we just saw one like big room. Uh, here we have a smaller room, and then there's another big indoor holding area as well, which is something you need for bonobos because they're very social animals. Sometimes group members want to separate from each other, so it's important to have those separate rooms for them to be able to do so. It really helps with the social dynamics. Yeah. I'm writing all of this down just in case if we're going to have uh, bonobos in uh, St. Reginald. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did quite a lot of research on it for oh, oh. Farmer Shadi back in the day. This That area that you just pointed at and probably mm -hmm. are going to go to, yeah, we're gonna go that's to my it. favorite area. <laughs> it's so cool. I don't know if you're supposed to be able to do anything here. Because <laughs> this feels like this thing is supposed to be interactive. But yeah, it, it wasn't interactive when much. I was there. <laughs> it, uh, it didn't seem to do much, but it looks cool. 
yeah, it's 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 one of the things that I've been I've been thinking about recreating in Planet Zoo, and I think I think it's really doable at this point with all the things that we have now. It's just I, I it didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Like, is it supposed to play audio or something? Oh yeah, it does play audio. Okay. Was there no audio when you were there? I I don't think so. I don't know. It, it's it was a generic kind of oh we spotted this over there blah blah blah. <laughs> oh maybe. Of, but kind of I feel thing. like the buttons are supposed to trigger something. Or, oh. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. These mirrors are uh, slightly better. <laughs> <laughs> With the emphasis on slightly, <laughs> but it's, it's, right. it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Some effort was made. <laughs> oh, look, it's snowing. Oh. Yeah. So here we have another holding area and I just realized there's actually a third one uh, as well. Yeah. yeah. Just lovely how up close you get and just the aerial view, seeing them up in the branches where they're probably gonna spend most of their time anyway. So. Also, this is a very, very wyatt like climbing frame. Like branches it's everywhere. So much. Yeah. No, no regard for anything. Just <laughs> throw it all together and it will work. And it works. <laughs> Hi, Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> no, Wyatt doesn't watch our videos. He thinks it's homework. <laughs> We'll give him homework then. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to the last room of the research center, which is the actual research center. Uh, you can see at the top. Um, here we have the last kind of area for them. We have a staff door. We have the main fact about bonobos that makes them so special. So they are 98.7% mm -hmm. <laughs> of the DNA matches out of humans, which is just crazy when you think about it. Uh, and there's a little button here you can press, you can switch language and play a little video about the actual people doing research here at the zoo. Uh, what are they researching on the bonobos and stuff like that, which is just really cool, I think. It definitely also connects, like, um, just a bit of that storytelling of what do zoos do, which I always mm -hmm. appreciate. And I think, I think it's also a way to just inspire people to do these things, because, okay, like, a young kid can come here, can look at that video and go, oh, I don't need to go, I don't really have to travel the entire world to study these animals. I can come here and I can can do yeah. so much work already. So I that's can cool. be a biologist. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, even so in real fun. life, the lamps reflect in the glass, so... <laughs> uh, I hate it. <laughs> that's the one downside of glass. I also like the TV screen in the back. It's not yeah. a great placement, reflection wise. <laughs> yeah, we're going outside. Um, we're currently still in the, the, the back time, like a while ago. Yeah, I but... entered from this area, by the way. Yeah. Because you, I am an idiot, apparently. You're mad, lad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we have a, a lovely bandit mongoose exhibit, which is only part of it, which we'll see. We'll see more of it later. Oh, I, I didn't realize that those are that those were the mongoose. <laughs> I thought those I thought that was a rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was pretty cold out and it started raining, so they were I mean it's you. Out. The chances that you're going to zoom in on a rock are equally <laughs> high. <laughs> Fair enough. This is so cool. <laughs> this, this is like a water really feature. Cool. Yeah. Way. Here we go back in time a little bit for when the ones were all out. And then, ooh, look at that transition. <laughs> uh, I didn't even have enough time to do my woo. <laughs> ooh. Yeah. Here we have uh, another side of the outside habitat. And you can see the bonobos have just started coming out again because the rain is about to stop. Um, so we can see them explore it a little bit. And I love how different uh, the habitat almost feels from this side. Oh yeah, it, it has like, like so many different kind of, of places they can go around and discover. And I especially love like this super tall, long grass. Mm -hmm. It just and the huge tree. Oh yeah, and but yeah, over here we can see. I think this is a bit of enrichment that we kind of have in Planet Zoo as well. Yeah, and here yeah. we can see it in action. So the bonobos using a little stick to get some of the food items uh, like down each level this seems so tedious 
<laughs> like way too much effort. I am surprised that they they're bothered to actually do it. <laughs> I, think, I, don't, I don't think we're necessarily smarter. I think we're just lazier than them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that's the thing <laughs> that differentiates us. Uh, also notice all of the nesting materials shown around the exhibit. That's amazing. Uh, I think that's placed every now and then for the bonobos just to use and make nests and chill. Which is actually not something I've seen anyone do. And we can easily do that with the new pieces from... Uh, well, not new anymore when this video comes. Oh, actually. No, we're not, not at the DLC yet. So, yeah, from the conservation <laughs> pack. <laughs> I was That's like, where are you That's going with this? this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. My mind is, is blubber. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, is this the one that I think... Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yeah. This... Cool. Oh, I love this one. So, just like in the Asia area, actually, we have a school, which... Uh, it's actually eerily similar to the one in Asia. You've got the school board with some information about the differences between bonobos and chimpanzees, I think. Whereas, yep, exactly. Whereas in Asia, it was like the difference between an Asian elephant and an African elephant. Yeah. Um, See, yeah. this, this is a kind of mural I like. <laughs> it is really cool. And, but just in general, this entire African village over here... Uh, here we have a supermarket. Oh yeah. Why? I don't know. It's cool. <laughs> um, it's also it's... cool. Uh, there's some swallows in here. There's like a sign like "Please keep it down yeah. a bit" because there's a swallow nest. Oh. Super cool. Yeah, this is one of those. It's one of those more classic, classic um, African villages in terms of like the buildings. But once mm -hmm. you get inside, it's all super themed and like not in a way that you usually would expect it to be oh the, yeah. the fanta sign <laughs> the, there's oh, those signs are just those are doing it for me dude <laughs> so is the is the oh damn it <laughs> oh yeah um is the inside newer than the outside by any chance or uh i think the inside is newer yeah because i newer. can't remember that being a thing Ooh, it's the swallows yeah, I, I can't remember those insides being a thing when I was a kid. <laughs> Hello, kid. Welcome to YouTube. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, because, I mean, these are the, the, the kind of classic uh, African houses, which I'm not even sure are very accurate. Uh, I feel like it's... It's the it's the Western idea of yeah. an African village. Exactly. That's what I thought. And it's something that zoos are moving away from and actually mm -hmm. uh Plunkendal has a totally different area that we might see in this video or in the next video that yeah. moves away from that from that kind of stereotype um, mm -hmm. i'm not 100% sure so we'll see if we'll we get to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah here we have uh, an aviary we'll see the other side of it in a bit as well um we've got a bunch of really cool birds like over here, the, I think that's the filtering guinea fowl. Yes, I think it is as well. And those are um, weaver birds. Weaver lovely. birds. Yes. yes. But we're gonna go to one of my favorite parts of this village uh, and of the bono ha bonobo habitat in general. Um, after we cross, <laughs> not just a crash truck or a crash train, just a uh, plane, just both of them. Of course. Because I couldn't choose. Why? <laughs> Why go for just one if you can go for two? <laughs> exactly. Uh, we also have a lovely canoe thing which I did not attempt to cross because <sighs> I valued my clothes. That's no problem because we're going to go to Plankendal. <laughs> oh God. Hopefully still this year and I will Hopefully. totally film you doing it's, it. It's, it's gonna be winter! <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's gonna be so much more fun if you fall in. <laughs> oh my god, look at that tree. It's so cool. But yeah, we're going into the Bonobo Cave, which I think is so cool. Yes. Um, just, just a cave. Why is it here? I don't know. Is it cool? <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> yeah, but it, cave it gives... Viewing. It gives you so, like, the one thing that this bonobo habitat does, it gives you so many layered views of the exhibit. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it, that's the thing that works so well about it. Just look at this rock work. It's so unique. And the waterfall. <laughs> yes. 
or what's left of it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do think this is kind of one of the... I don't want to call it the stable of, um, of Plankenal, but it is something that they always try to do with their bigger exhibits, like give mm -hmm. really multiple layers of view. Yeah, you can animals. see it with the elephants as well. Yep, exactly. The elephants were going to be the ones that I was going to mention as well. Yeah. Never understood what this was. <laughs> I think it's just airflow or something. <laughs> uh, there was a Pepsi can in there, though, so I don't know. I think in the past I've been told that I was going to be put there if I... <laughs> if I wouldn't stop making puns. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> You're talking about the poor people that have to hear my puns, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just mentioned uh, that we saw part of the Bonobo, or not the Bonobo, the Bandit Mongoose uh, exhibit. Mm -hmm. And we're actually about to see the other part, because they have not mm -hmm. here. This is just a random hole that doesn't show anything <laughs> more or less than the other one, so why is it there? I don't know, but... And it's... here we have an underground viewing of the bandit mongoose. Uh, we also have more bonobo. <laughs> it's actually the <laughs> only part where we get to see those uh, indoor areas from the bottom, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, which is also pretty cool. And the fact that you look inside from kind of an outside area is also kind of interesting. Yeah. But no sun issues because we're in a cave. Thank God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really wish more zoos designed around sun glare and stuff because yeah. it's so frustrating. But yeah, here we have the uh, kind of indoor section, I guess, of the Bandit Mongoose. And I'm surprised I've never seen them in here, even in the winter. But I don't know, can they not? Maybe they, it can be blocked off or something? Oh, perhaps, because I haven't seen them in there either. Um, but. They're bad it is mongoose. Nice, but... I, don't, I don't spend that much time watching. I usually <laughs> like, think oh, they're yeah. a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so. So, next up, uh, over here. And I love this about Plankadal. They do this for most of their netted over areas, uh, walkthrough areas. You go inside of a little building like this. And when you come outside, uh, you are in the walkthrough enclosure. Which I think is really, really cool. Yeah. But this is the walkthrough lemur habitat, as we can tell by all of the rules and retails yeah. on the signs. I was gonna say, like, these buildings make the transition between outside and inside the apiary, like, so much better. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, all the signs that you need to have <laughs> then kind of ruin that experience. Like, oh yeah, yeah, you're going into the wild yeah. with the animals, but here's the rules. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, for the lemurs especially, it's it's really yeah. necessary, so it's understandable. <laughs> I haven't yeah. been able to go inside this aviary yet, because last time, I think there were COVID restrictions. I yep. go in. Yeah, uh, especially this was also the first time for me, uh, my previous visit, which was a bit of a shame, because this aviary as well um, is also part of it. So here we also have a uh, full screen guinea fowl once again, and we have the uh, secretary okay. bird. As well as some other birds. As yeah. Goron has edited that in. Thank oh, you. beautiful. <laughs> but yeah, I just... I think it's really interesting that you have an, a viewing area of uh, an aviary like this inside of another walkthrough mm -hmm. exhibit. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I love that too. And this very kind of classical building, <laughs> I want to almost say. Um, I, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure... Yeah, it's pretty... Really, Obvious that this is a, uh, a protected building. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, the other side of it is is in the Europe area where it fits a lot better. Oh yeah. And sure. yeah, over here we have the black lemurs, and they had a little baby. You can't really tell. Uh, I think later on you get to see it a little, little better. Uh, but yeah, the parents were very protective over it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can kind of see. Oh. Yeah, you can see the little hand over there. I think that's the baby. So super cute, super awesome, and I, I think didn't this was... bring it. He didn't bring it with you. Oh, go on. Yeah, uh, it was a little high up. <laughs> I'm tall, but I'm not that tall. And there was someone watching me, and I feel like ah, yes. <laughs> Next, if we'll when we go together, I'll be on the yeah, lookout. You, mm -hmm. you can distract them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll work 100. Um, <laughs> percent We also have in the past. a few. We also have a view of the intersection over here. 
a bit hard to oh. look into because of the glare, but pretty nice. Always like to <laughs> see indoor sections. Yeah. The the framework, the old classic framework, is really really beautiful though. So like, <laughs> like I'm, yeah. uh, it's out of place for sure. It but, flashes a little bit, but it but it's cool. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yep. So next up, we're gonna leave this and we're gonna look at some zebra. I think. Mm -hmm. There's time. Yeah, and we're going to look at the area where. Oh yeah, I this is always... my favorite door, by the way. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to poke it in the eyes to open it. <laughs> See, it, what, uh, if I enter the African area, I usually enter it from uh, the left side. Yeah, well, I, I think I think I will show it in a second, but we're going the other way first. So we got a little truck. Look at that go. Um, so here we have uh, the lemur area from the outside, so we can see kind of what that aviary looks like. From inside you barely see the netting, especially mm -hmm. on the video. But uh, this window is completely covered up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's to prevent glare from the sun. <laughs> oh, right, of course, of course. Um, but yeah, here we have the Hartman's Mountain Zebra. And we have a whole lot of storks, Whoa. which was just ridiculous, to be honest. Um, yeah, Blankadal had a, uh, a stork explosion. Every time I came here, all you could hear in the background was just the clapping of their yeah. beaks. Um, it, it's cool, though. Like, also, they, uh, they tag them and stuff as well. Yeah. So. Like, we'll, we'll have to continue about the storks, but this is something that we also needed to start doing in St. Reginald. I really, mm. really love the zoo science points in uh, yeah. in Plankendal and in Antwerp. Yeah. Um, they were really cool. But yeah, uh, um, storks have always been a big thing in Plankendal. Like, their big restaurant is called Stork. Uh, right. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's, it's been part of their history, I think, pretty much from the start, really. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Like, a lot of zoos do things with storks, but I didn't realize Plankadel had such, like, a special connection with them. <laughs> but yeah, these, these signs are really cool as well. Uh, just so much... There's so much, so much fun, information. Yeah. So much information, but also it just brought in a fun way, you know? Yeah. I think it's it's kind of a shame that it's, like... How, how, do I, how do I put this? Like, it's a shame that it's, like, hidden behind a bunch of them that you like have to flip over just to see um, because I'm afraid like a lot of people are not going to see these in real life They're not going to spend time watching these yeah no uh, I get what you say yeah it's a, like there's a lot of information so you're not going to read all of it and like not everyone's going to take the, the time to flip through all of them yeah either, so. yeah so, yeah that, that's the thing that I that is kind of sad because there's so much information like how they used to use zebras as uh, pulling horses. I don't know if that's the way you put it in, <laughs> in English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or just riding horses in yeah, general, yeah. which... Uh, they're not... They're not really tamed. meant for that. <laughs> they're not domesticated, you know? They uh, they don't like it. They they're are not very good at it. They are wild horses, and even... <laughs> I've, from what I've always heard is that zebras are like pretty much impossible to tame. Uh, yeah, they're just the biggest assholes on this event. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. If you ever read anything about zebras and how to combine animals, especially if you want to do that for Planet Zoo, it usually mentions how zebras are just like, yeah, the assholes of the savannah. Yeah, you need to have a way to separate them. <laughs> I think, oh, this uh, is also a, a very nice viewing area. Yeah, yeah, this is lovely. And I think and this well, is something... While the aviary was closed, this was all you had, so... Yeah. But it's it's something that some people forget to think about. But walkthrough aviaries are not a thing for everyone. There's people who are afraid of animals and are not willing to go inside of them. Mm -hmm. So like this is uh, this this is really necessary. Yep. Yep. Exactly. I love all of this. And also, um, now that we're living in this day and age. Uh, I think a lot of zoos need to put more effort into creating areas like these, especially now that, you know, last avian flu lasted for like more than half a year. All, all walkthrough aviaries had to be closed, at least here in the Netherlands. 
So I, still... I feel like when, when planning aviaries, you need to think about those situations and mm -hmm. how are you going to present your animals in situations like that. Yeah, exactly. I it, It's still surprising because I, I visited zoos when there was avian flu and I can't I can't for the life of me remember if this if they were ever closed closed off. Yeah, I think Plunkenel didn't, but I don't know. The Netherlands just really cares about their, their chickens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we don't. We're Belgian. <laughs> chickens. Who cares? I'm going to be attacked for this in the uh, one day I'm going to be cancelled and it's going to be for Why? that. Why? <laughs> Why? Uh, anyway, here we have the uh, the village weaver um, aviary from the other side. It's pretty cool. I don't know why I didn't record it for longer, but we also have the African African crested porcupine. No, uh, Cape uh, porcupine. Yeah, the I think the isn't the crested porcupine the African porcupine. Yeah, this is the Cape porcupine <laughs> oh, specifically. Okay. Um, so they're the superhero version of porcupines. Cool. I, I guess. I don't know. Every time I was here, they were over here. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, at <laughs> least you got to see them. Like, the wombat <laughs> is... I, comple gone. I completely understand, by the way, that uh, Planet Zoo decided to put that in a Halloween-themed pack, because wombats are imaginary animals that don't exist. Yeah, I You guess. can quote me on that. <laughs> But just some backstage peaks over here. This is really cool. I think there's like a water filtration area. Yes, and you were you used to be able to visit this. This was a guest oh, area in the past. Really? Yep. It's uh, interesting. It was one of the first things that I made at Planet Zoo, actually. Hmm. Yeah. So, what was the guest point of view for it? Was it just look at how we you have could walk clean water? You could go through to the building and it was, yeah, it was just a thing about uh, this is how we uh, clean and filter our, our water. That's cool. Um, yeah. So we just saw uh, where Ibn always enters the uh, <laughs> African area. Which is apparently is the wrong way to enter. I'm sorry. It's, it's a shortcut <laughs> from Europe. Um, but yeah, once again, these little huts that you go through to go into the aviary is really cool. Yeah, it it's it's... The one thing that I have to give Plunkenal, um, and it took them quite a while to reach this point, but they're quite consistent throughout the, throughout the entire zoo. Like mm -hmm. the same kind of beats over and over and over again, and I really like that because it yeah. it works and it creates it sets finish. the expectations for every guest, and you know what you're getting into every time you see a thing like that. Yeah, yeah, that's actually really cool. Just that cohesive like, yeah. experience. Exactly. All about user experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's important. It so is I, a uh, I, very empty day at this aviary. Yeah, and I wow. kind of for, I didn't do a great job at filming the sign, so I have no idea what's supposed to be in here. There's um, a hammer cup in here. Um, I don't, don't know. There was a sign uh, last time I was here. So not the visit we're currently looking at, but like half a year before that. Mm -hmm. uh, that was like a storm or a snowfall or something damaged the aviary. So oh. all the birds were put out for a moment, uh, put in other aviaries. So maybe that's also why it's a bit more empty. But we are kind of leaving the village area, um, kind of signified by this uh, border crossing that we're about to cross. And we're kind of going to the more wild side of Africa. And as you can all tell, we are heading closer and closer to the end of this episode because we did decide to split the Africa episode into two. So yep. in the next episode, we will explore the, the other half. Um, so this was completely a, mu a mutual decision. And uh, Koron <laughs> said we, this was totally not just his decision. <laughs> what? I asked you for feedback on it. <laughs> uh, true. <laughs> no, no, you just asked me, where do I have to cut this? <laughs> Oh, I told you, hey, I found a good cutting point. Should I cut it in half? And you were like, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> anyway. This, is, this is a really cool area. <laughs> it's a really cool border station. Um, just and a really nice, like, small bit of theming. Yeah, and it's it's a... It's a my last visit when I came there, um, the, my visit before that, it wasn't there yet. Mm. And it, it, it really shows how they are sprucing up older areas with this, with this theming. Yeah, um, I mean, because it kind of completes the story. Like, we're leaving yeah. the village, we're going 
for this border crossing, which is definitely something you would see, especially in, in the Republic of Congo, which is what the flag on the mm -hmm. um, thing is. Um, so yeah, we're going to explore that next episode. Um, we are reaching the end here. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in two weeks, because next week is a St. Reginald episode. So I oh. hope you look forward to that. I am. Thank you for joining me, Evan. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank See you, you for uh, putting up with me. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>